I've been here for about 12 years or so uh, in Rogue Valley. I have a special relationship with the Jewish community based on my studies of history and politics, which are very inconvenient when you come to the conclusions uh, from really researching history compared to what we've been told is the um, accepted view. Um, the second woman that was up here, um, the Jewish queer woman, uh, she mentioned about carrying concealed. I think that's a wise choice for people that they don't feel safe as to uh, as our right is to is to, is to defend themselves if they think they need it. Uh, she mentioned that uh, a man was um, asked to leave from her synagogue for being a self-proclaimed Nazi. That was me. Only I'm not a self-proclaimed Nazi. I'm a, I'm a national socialist. I subscribe to national socialism. And so the way the term Nazi is used is, is a perjurative. It means, it means nigger, basically, because I'm a race-conscious white man. And so the way that black people were treated back in the 50s and 40s and going back to the Civil War is basically I'm feeling the same way, that that's the way I'm treated. I have an ongoing campaign of defamation and libel and slander in one of our local communities. I'm being called a neo-Nazi. This is basically a, uh, a wanted poster, wanted dead or alive poster. And so I've been uh, having threats against my person based on my um, historical understandings and my, my political slants. I pass out um, flyers, informational flyers, around Ashland, and I've been told that these are hate speech, anti-Semitic hate speech, and no one's ever been able to tell me what about this is, is hateful. Um, when people start to look for what's hateful in here, they start to get educated based on factual analysis. I only want to understand the world that I live in and, and what influences and what pressures uh, are guiding uh, the world that we live in. Uh, when I came in here today, there was a man, uh, was, he, was he back here? Oh, he's on the side here. He um, accosted me as being uh, a Nazi, and I showed him, showed him my, my flyer here that that Nazi is, Nazi is the new nigger. And uh, he, he actually says, I hate you. I hate you for being a Nazi. And yeah, you are a nigger, he says. How many times do you say that word? Man? Well, it's it's offensive. Offensive. Oh, give up you had six minutes. Deltra, please. Oh, please. So, Come on. I'm gonna ask you thank you. So, I don't believe in hate speech legislation. Uh, I think we already have legislation on the books. We have rape um, statutes that that's, uh, if somebody gets raped, there are statutes on the books. If somebody gets murdered or assaulted or harassed, there's laws on the books for that. Hate is not a quantifiable term. And so basically hate is an emotion. Um, and it's hard to quantify that. We also, uh, with, with regard to the, um, the painting on the, on the transformer box um, with the Anne Frank locker, um, we have um, documented instances of basically uh, hate hoaxes, which basically are people doing things and then uh, having it be, uh, you know, they say it's hate speech, but actually they're the ones who are actually perpetrating the writing um, of that. We had the bomb threats called against the synagogues uh, going back a year and a half ago. And uh, it was big hoopla, you know, it was on Amy Goodman, all this hate speech against the synagogues um, uh, with this bomb threats ended up being uh, a Jewish American man and his father that were arrested for that. So we have to be time careful about um, oh. understanding. Your time is out. Um, Your time is out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't feel safe here tonight. Again, I, I was also uh, told that somebody hated me, and he was proud of that and thought it was uh, appropriate and necessary. And uh, I believe that's based on um, misunderstandings and profiling of my relatively recent changes in my political views and historical understandings. I've been studying for the last three years and developing a new understanding of reality. And uh, it has, I assure you, it has brought hate to me. There are three men in this room that uh, I feel have directed hate at me over the last, say, two years. And uh, it's very disturbing, based on a misunderstanding of, of complex positions that I've taken on history and politics. And that's profiling. Uh, been called an anti-Semite. I attended the um, uh, lecture and slideshow at the synagogue about a month and a half ago, maybe, on the topic of anti-Semitism. I'm very interested in that. It's a very complex topic. I've learned a lot about it. 
I thought I might have something to contribute. But I, I lingered in the lobby and finally Rabbi Zaslow told me to leave. I wasn't welcome for my views. And um, uh, if he were here tonight, that would be a fourth person. A, uh, my, to my complete surprise, my picture and some online statements I've made taken wildly out of context were featured in that slideshow. And I feel this was only agitating falsely anti-Semitism, uh, excuse me, hate and fear in the community. I was there to reduce that through an engaged dialogue and development of an understanding. I told Rabbi Zaslow, to ask me to leave is only going to increase the fear and misunderstanding. But, but I didn't realize I was going to be featured on the big screen, you know. And then a um, newspaper article went out the next day in both the tidings and the Tribune featuring all uh, these online uh, statements out of context and the fear people feel about me. I'm a violent person, I'm not going to harm anyone, I want to engage in an um, intellectual and historical dialogue. Um, I helped organize an event in which um, a speaker came and spoke about the truth behind 9-11 and the war on terror, and a man in this room rushed the speaker. He was uh, shouting and um, plunged, lunged towards the speaker. I thought there was going to be a violent incident. It was very troubling. And then, then I was profiled for being associated with this speaker. I had the doors closed in my face when entering a, uh, another event, and, and there's quite a number of these incidents. So I don't feel safe here. People have directed hate at me. And if I want to put up a sign that says, it's okay to be white, I'm terrified. My house could, could be assaulted. And, and, uh, but I see plenty of other signs, Black Lives Matter, love is love. I don't feel like that's fair, and I don't feel safe. Thank you. I'd like to um, address this, and I think it's important that, um, although you know this is a public meeting, it's a public space, um, but Unite Oregon is an organization. You know, we have to address uh, some of the comments that were made, you know, a little earlier, but some folks that were here. Um, Unite Oregon is a racial justice organization and racial justice centers all of our work. This is a space for uh, vulnerable people to tell their stories as victims, as survivors of structural oppression, hate, and violence. So we need to respect this, spa this space. Having spaces set aside specifically for victims of discrimination and bias is not racist. It is an attempt to rectify systemic injustices. Racism is power and privilege. White people do not experience systemic oppression that makes it hard to find a job, access housing, or access health care, etc. <coughs> this is a basic tenet of our organization, Unite Oregon. Next week is the opening ceremonies of the legislature. There's a deadline for us, for this group that's been working very hard for eight months. This isn't our first meeting. But this part of our process was so important to us that we made sure that we had these three sessions this week before the legislature goes into session because we needed to hear from you. So please submit and ask your friends and ask your neighbors to submit additional testimony to us. You can send it to attorney general at doj.state.or.us. I know it's long. Or you can just send it to me, you know who I am, right? Just send it to me at my office and I'll make sure it gets to the right place and to Aaron and to these folks who have been spending a lot of time on these issues. But the fact of the matter is that you are the ones who are living these experiences. And that is why we're here tonight. And I will come up and down the freeway as many times as is necessary to make sure that I hear from each and every person who wants to be heard. So thank you for coming.